Hey everyone, it's Kristen here with book three of the Superhero Stamp Album Series, the collaboration with the United States Postal Service celebrating this century. Um, you might recognize this character from the DC vs. Marvel, he fought Wolverine, it's Lobo. And again, as I said, with uh, randomly Aquaman being in, you know, their last time. You'll see why um, in a couple pages. <laughs> and then we have, like, um, Gangbuster. It says, raised on the mean streets of Metropolis, slums, former gang member and boxing champ, Jose Delgado uses amazing athletic abilities to combat street crime as Gangbuster. And that's him right there. It's interesting that they also threw him in there because he's not very well known. And this is uh, this is Doctor Light. She the little bio they give for her when an alien encounter left um, her supercharged with solar energy, she gained the power to manipulate light at will, using it as a weapon against evil. Makes sense. And she's a, a physicist. Also makes sense. Okay, so this is about uh, prohibition. Um, you know, they um, the 18th Amendment was passed to ban the um, the manufacturing, the sale, and basically consumption of alcohol. Because of course, I mean, yeah, alcohol is bad or can be bad. Like, but you know, everything in moderation. I I believe. I mean, especially like that sort of thing i mean you know as long as you're not like drinking and driving then if you're just going to enjoy it, it just it's just funny to me that like they banned it and it was like such an up in arms thing and they're talking about how um you know gangs used it to make money because they realized oh my gosh we can make a lot of money off of this and there was like turf wars over um smuggled um alcohol <laughs> So, and then they had, you know, like, hidden places in the back of, like, um, clubs or, you know, bars or, not bars, because bars were illegal, um, but just restaurants called speakeasies, and that's where you would get alcohol. And, and then, of course, Babe Ruth, like, everyone has heard of Babe Ruth. Like, he had, um... Just 60 home runs and uh, 154 game season. I mean, he's, you know, everyone knows who that is. Like, if even if you don't, like, follow baseball, like, religiously, which I don't. I'm not. But I, I still know who that is. I mean, everyone knows who that is, or at least they should. And then um, here's another term for the, the 20s from the 20s flappers and there's Robin Ugh, like in a fur coat that's embarrassing Robin <laughs> um, and they call them flappers because like apparently the they left the flaps on their gouaches unfastened so they like flap when they walk I don't know I've never heard that as an explanation for it I always thought it was like just because the way they dressed. Um, but, you know, they dressed, like, scandalously in short skirts, which really it was, like, at least down to the knee. Um, <laughs> so, but that was considered short then. Um, you know, and they had the, the short, like, wavy, cute hairstyle, um, the long beads, and their stockings were, like, rolled up, and, you know, they danced and they drank, and they even had, like, a their own slang. Like it says reet means hot. Cut in a rug, of course dancing. Most people have heard that one. Dogs feet, you know, my dogs are barking. People have heard that before. Cats meow, great. Bees knees, even better. <laughs> Scram, leap. People still use that one. Jalopy, car. Jake means cool. I had never heard that one before. Hep means hip. Like a he real hep cat. I've heard that before. Sheiks are guys, Shebas, babes, 
Totsy Totsy, wild, whoopee, fun. So, and there's Green Lantern talking about the radio. Um, how uh, this guy who actually took a distress distress signals from a sinking sinking ship named the Titanic, which he wouldn't know how important that is until I mean later. Obviously, he thought there must be a better way to actually like make like in-home receivers so that everyone can hear the news or that everyone can have access to this information. And so they became like radios became the most successful product of the twenties. And, um, at the, in 1929, $60 million worth of radios have been sold. That's crazy. That's a lot. Um, there was a time when, like, the model trains were super popular. Um, like, everyone had one. I uh, I remember my brother had one when he was little. And uh, my mom would put one around the Christmas tree. And that's usually where you see um, them now is, like, in movies or pictures or, like, uh, things related to Christmas. You see a, a toy train, like, uh, around the Christmas tree. Um because they're not really that popular anymore. But they were. Like, Lionel um, put out a bunch of them. And they even it says they even tried to get girls interested in them by painting them pink and purple <laughs> and pastel colors. I don't think that works. <laughs> and, of course, you know, 19th Amendment, women win the right to vote. And, like, you can see Wonder Woman. You know, she looks totally different because this artist has a different style than... Let's see where she previously. Then this artist. See, you see her there. You see her there. So I just find that interesting that they just had all these different writers do the art and the color for all these different pages. I mean, that just makes it that much more interesting because you look through and you compare them and think, huh, well... There's so so many, even though it's a, such an iconic character, so many people have different takes on this character. Anyway, um, 19th Amendment, women have the right to vote. Um, yeah, just in time for the presidential election in uh, 1920. Uh, oh, so this, I was talking about Lobo. You remember him from DC versus Marvel? This is why he's in here. This is the only reason. Because, like, Lobo's a slob and, like, he doesn't care. Like, a double may care. Like, whatever. I don't care. And this is about Emily Post, Miss Manners. You know, she had her call in, like, you know, if you don't, you know, don't use excessive force. Don't forget to use proper utensils. You know, don't leave heel skids on the table and in you. That sort of thing. And there was, like, a whole, you know, do thank your hostess for the meal sort of thing, and uh, it was super popular, um, first published in 1922, and it's been, like, through 10 editions and 90 printings before its author's death in 1960, so it just, it's called Etiquette in Society, Business, and Politics, ain't at home, so that's the only reason Lobo's in this comic book, because of, to use him as an example of, like, hey, this is what you don't do, <laughs> oh, Gatsby, like the um, the novel by F. Scott Fitzgerald um, about the fictional Jay Gatsby, and basically he's talking about how uh, the people who grew up in that generation are the lost generation um, because um, it says They, the people that lived during the Jazz Age were dedicated to the fear of poverty and the worship of success. And if you've ever read the book or um, seen the movie, then you, you know what that means. And even though they had all this success, like they worshipped it, they were still like empty on the inside. And that's what he's talking about in terms of the lost generation. Um, and then this is Margaret Mead, an anthropologist, and she did the whole nature versus nurture and, uh, look, we're joined by Supergirl, another kid, so to speak. And this, look, there's Gangbuster. This is about Notre Dame football. 
the four horsemen um, in, let's see, the 1920s dominated the game. Um, like I said, I don't know much about sports, so my bad. But I, I know that Notre Dame used to be like, uh, well, I mean, they like revolutionized the, um, the way football was played. Because before, you know, they didn't, they like perfected uh, the forward pass and um, emphasized skill, strategy, and speed versus just, you know, before. I, I kind of like equate it, I guess, to the Revolutionary War where they like just stood up in a line and they like shot at each other and who was that, whoever was left standing, that was the winner. And then during the Civil War, they actually like used guerrilla warfare tactics and like went behind enemy lines and like sabotaged people or came behind them to ambush them, you know, that sort of thing. That's what I kind of think of as um, before and after. <laughs> Okay, and then Charles Lindbergh, he was the first man alone to uh, travel from New York to Paris nonstop. Um, it took him, again, Superman flying. He's usually there. Um, it took him 33 hours. Uh, let's see. We have, like, a thing about this artist who was uh, apparently a realist painter. He painted things, like, as they were not as like society wanted them to be um and then of course the art uh the 20s were popular for the art deco style a lot of uh the that or the orange color and geometrical shapes and more sleek and modern instead of like the victorian era and then we have um jazz of course like louis armstrong duke ellington um like of course, you know, everyone, uh, okay, almost everyone should know who Louis Armstrong is. He was, like, has this very distinctive voice and, um, you know, a really great trumpeter. I mean, everyone should know who that is, but if you ask a lot of people today, they probably don't know who that is. <laughs> um, and then this is talking about the stock market, how everyone was, like, buying stocks with money they didn't have, but, you know, they were promised this great return on it, and then, in therefore, buying stocks, upping the price of the stock because people were buying it with money they actually didn't have kind of led to the great stock market crash of 1929. Because, I like, one of the examples is, like, how could I lose 100000 I never had 100000 dollars I mean if you borrowed it and you paid you know you purchased use this borrowed money to purchase it's just like having a credit card like I, that's not something I often I try not to do that I try to just spend money that I have and not like spend money you don't have <laughs> but you know it's hard sometimes <laughs> but anyway that is book three so I hope you enjoyed that and next, we're going to be talking about the 30s and the Great Depression. <laughs> and so I hope you join me for that. Until next time. Bye.